Hello, my name is Steve Royce with Crescent Design. This video will demonstrate the basic burst and leak detection functions of our hydraulic burst leak tester, the HBLT. Other videos will become available to demonstrate the many other features and functions of the HBLT. The HBLT has been in constant production and continuous improvement for over 18 years. It is in use by virtually every major disposable medical device manufacturer and has become the worldwide quality assurance standard for balloon catheters and many other devices. The HBLT has a unique, sophisticated software control algorithm that provides precise, accurate, and repeatable control of pressure ramp rates and target pressures. I'm now going to select the main menu to begin the demonstration. So here we have the main screen with three choices. Purge the tester, where we purge the air out of the tester once every day. Run a test. Here is where you get to uh, put in an operator name if you choose to. And I put my initials. A lot code if you wish to. And you may then choose up to 40 tests that are stored internally. And then the third choice is the engineering menu. Here you have edit test information, perform calibration, system configuration, set the date and time, and browse the tests. Here the operators can browse the tests without being able to change anything if the password has been implemented. We're going to go up to edit because we want to create a burst test. So here we have new, edit, we can print or delete, and change the password. I'm going to choose new and here it gives you an indication of the types of tests that can be created and stored in the HBLT. A basic linear ramp, a staircase that gradually increases in pressure, fatigue which repeats the same pressure over and over, incremental which cycles and increments the pressure up, custom where you're allowed to create tests with up to 100 discrete pressure values, and a group test where you can link up to 10 different tests together that will run automatically and sequentially. We're going to do a, a burst test, so we're going to use a linear ramp. Here we choose the engineering unit. In this case, I'm going to choose pounds per square inch, and I'm going to call the test a burst test. And I'm just going to abbreviate it. The product ID, I'm going to call one, two, three, Engineer is me, and our first choice is compliance, which is a measure of how compliant or stretchy the product is. I'm going to choose two. Fill, this is where the product is filled prior to the beginning of the test, and you set the, the fill rate. Here the target pressure, in this case we could set it as, as high as uh, the limit of the machine, in this case it's 1,000 PSI. I'm going to set it for 750. Leak rate, we really don't care about that because we're going to burst the product, but I'm going to leave it at its default setting of 10 PSI per second. Leak dip is default to none. I'm going to leave it that way. The up burst rate is the sensitivity of the burst detection profile, and I'm going to leave it defaulted at 50 PSI per second. And you can see the range, by the way, the minimum and the maximum on all of these parameters. The downburst rate, we don't care about that. We will burst on the way up. And the up rate. And I'm going to make it 25, 25 PSI per second. And the down rate doesn't matter because it will have burst by then. So I'm going to leave it at a default of 250. The dwell time, again, we don't care because it's going to burst. This will become important later when we do the leak test. And the maintain, similarly, we don't care about that, so we'll go. And now the test has been completed. We can select the test, a shortcut from here, but I'm going to return back to the main menu so that you can see that if I choose the uh, run a test, now you can see that burst has been entered under in, in this screen here. I'm going to select it. It gives me a brief description of the test so I can ensure that I have chosen the right one and I simply say OK. <clears throat> 
the machine is now setting itself, getting ready to do the test. First it will do a fill. And what I have here is a green plastic tube commonly used for uh, compressed air in, in industrial applications. And I'm using this as, a, as an example of doing a burst. It could be uh, any number of different things. So the first thing we need to do is get the air out of the tube. And we use the fill function on that. So just a quick tour of the screen. You'll notice it's, uh, the tester is ready. It gives you the name of the test, the, pr the pressure. You, currently you see it's zero. And the target is 750 cycles. The target is one and there's a cycle timer and press start to, to, to fill. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press start. So water is coming out and I'm going to cap off the end. And what has happened is that, that the tester has sensed the back pressure and has stopped running and is now resetting itself in anticipation of starting the test. And I'm going to put this in this container so that uh, I don't get wet. And now we're ready to start the test. So I'm going to push the start button. And you can see that it's saying ramping up to pressure. You'll notice the current pressure is increasing. Uh, I believe this tubing will rupture somewhere around 550, 520 PSI. So you notice that the tubing has ruptured at this end and the up burst pressure was 539 PSI. If I wanted to continue testing additional products, I would simply hit OK. And the machine will reset itself in anticipation of running another test. So now we're going to reset the machine and do a leak test. Now I'm going to create a leak test and I'm going to use some common brass fittings to simulate a leak that haven't been completely tightened. So to detect a leak we need to create a test. I'm going to the engineering menu to the edit screen, hit the new button and I'm going to use the staircase test in this case I'm going to use PSI and I'm going to call this a leak test. And, and then the product ID is one, two, three. Okay, and I'm the engineer. And the compliance is one because the part is very rigid. And we have actually pre filled this so we don't need to fill it, so we can say no. Some products do, some don't. Uh, we can set the leak rate here and we'll set it to 5 PSI and that's 5 PSI per second. So at some point if the pressure drops at a rate of 5 PSI per second, it will detect the leak. However, if the leak is smaller than that, we use a different term called leak dip. And we're going to use 5 PSI leak dip. So that means that if at any time during the, t the leak detection period it drops more than 5 PSI, it will declare a leak. Okay. Um, the upburst rate defaults to 50. We're going to leave it there because we're not looking for a, a burst. We don't care. We are not looking for a downburst, so we leave that there. The initial pressure, in this case, we're going to make it 25. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to let it increment up 25. So that means the first step will be 25 and the next step will be 50. So we'll say OK. And the maximum pressure in this case defaults to 500. We'll simply leave it there because I know it's going to leak before then. And the up rate, I'm going to make that um, 25. And the down rate uh, we'll leave at 250. Uh, the dwell time we're going to leave at 
uh, we're going to put it five seconds and we're going to have the maintain be zero so what that means is that it will go to the target pressure and it will wait there for five seconds I'll just go back to show you at the dwell time it'll wait there for five seconds and then we'll make the maintain zero so during that period of time it will not maintain the pressure and so if the pressure drops there must be a leak and so now we're done and I could shortcut right to the test from here but I want to go back and show you that now the test appears right here leak here's the review again we saw before I'm going to say OK and now the HBLT is preparing itself for the test. So here is the main screen for the test. It says that it's ready. The test is the leak and it's a staircase test. You see the pressure currently is zero and the target is 25. The cycles uh, one is the target and we're going to hit start. You'll notice the pressure is increasing to 25 and you notice it's dropping a little bit but it's not dropping fast enough and now we go to 50 and once we got to 50 it did in fact leak. We detected the leak at 45 and if you look over here you'll notice that we have the leak right here. So we've seen how to create a burst test and a leak test. We've run them. And these are just a few of the many features and functions of the hydraulic burst leak tester. I invite you for more information to look at our website. And uh, if you want even more information, give us a call. You can always download the manual uh, off our website as well. Thanks very much.